All right, let's get this started. Hopefully uh, putting the phone in my pocket won't accidentally press the button and turn it off. So just a quick note here about Fuji X-T4. I did go ahead and get one. Um, I'll explain more about that in just a second, but I'll go over the camera more in depth. And, you know, there's a lot of reviews out there. I'm not going to go do a really, you know, like a review, just more of a user experience from my, uh, my standpoint. And um, some things... I think it might have been a bug in my shoe. Sorry about that. Um, things I like and dislike a little bit about it. But um, well, just real quick, when they sell you the camera, they don't give you an external charger. You have to charge it with a battery charger. Or the uh, you have to charge the battery in the camera. So they give you this short cable, which is maybe a little over a foot long. And um, this charging brick here. And just keep in mind, if you buy a longer cable, that's what I wanted to mention, um, it's USB-C on each end, so the charger takes a USB-C. But you can use like a, some other charger, you know, like a cell phone charger, but one of the bigger ones, one of the more powerful ones, because, you know, something like probably for a, a tablet would be better, because this one is, was it puts out like 3 amps or something. You just want to get one of the stronger ones because otherwise it'll take forever to charge your battery. But they don't give you an external battery charger, so you're forced to charge the battery in the camera. And they just give you this short cable. I'll throw that over there by the tripod. Uh, I did go ahead and buy a longer one. Again, that's USB-C on each end. And um, this one's about four feet, so that'll be a lot more convenient for charging, you know, in a hotel or somewhere where uh, I don't have a power outlet really close to where I can set the camera to safely charge it. So just... You might want to keep that in mind. They do sell a, a $70 dual battery charger, um, but it is a separate purchase. And um, I already have one of those dual battery chargers, for, you know, the Watson brand. So it's a Watson dual battery charger, and it has interchangeable battery plates on it. So you just buy whatever, and the battery plates are like $2.50 or something like that. Um, so you just buy whatever charging plate matches your batteries, which they don't have one for this yet. That's the, uh, the newer battery. The... Um, NPW-235, so it's this bigger battery that looks more like a something like a D750 Nikon battery. Um, so it's more powerful, lasts longer. Anyway, they don't have the charging plates from Watson yet, and um, when they finally do, I assume they'll come, up with, come out with one, uh, I'll be able to buy a couple of those, and then I can charge my batteries on that uh, charger I already have. This is kind of a universal battery charger. And... Uh, so why I got the X-T4, you know, I had the Nikon Z50, and I'm filming this with the, recording it with the Nikon Z7. I really love the Z7. I've talked about it many times, you know, in videos in the past, and I have no interest in getting rid of it. You know, it's just a, a great camera. You know, it's really super comfortable, you know, outstanding image quality, and it just, everything about it just works really well for me. And um, I know there's, you know, people talk about continuous autofocus, autofocus tracking, you know, it's not a sports camera as far as tracking goes, but everything else, I can't think of anything that it does bad, uh, badly. You know, it's just an outstanding camera. But the Z50, you know, my idea was have uh, two cameras that take the same lens mount. So the Z50, Z7 and Z50, of course, they have that new Nikon Z mount, which is a really huge mount. And uh, the APS-C lenses that they made for the Nikon Z50 will mount on the Z7 and vice versa. Um, but, you know, they've only got those two lenses so far with the Z50, but they're really great lenses. You know, they're super sharp. I've never seen any, uh, you know, kit lenses that are that inexpensive that are that good. Um, you know, if you look at my website, there's uh, a lot of sample images from the Z50, and you know, it's, it's got a really nice sensor, great, great image quality, um, and the lenses are great. But you know, I, the more I thought about it, you know, I, I've always had a soft spot in my heart for Fuji, even though there's a few things that drive me crazy about the Fujis. Um, I'm going to that more in depth later on, but I just want to keep this short as I can. But the um, one thing I wish they would stop using the X-Trans uh, filter on the sensors. Um, you know, the, the GFX, the medium format cameras they have, they don't use the X-Trans filter on that. X-Trans and um, some of their cheaper uh, cameras like the, I can't think of any right now, but um, they've got a cheaper line and then they've got the more expensive line, the x you know, the X series, and then they've got a cheaper series that had that, you know, they have great sensors, but they don't have the X-Trans filter array on the sensor, which I like that better because 
for one thing, you know, all the imaging, um, at, imaging software like Adobe Lightroom and all the others, you know, they just work better with the non x trans sensors, you know, like the bare type sensor or the filter on there. So, you know, in Adobe, you, without getting into all the details about it, you know, that Adobe Lightroom so far still doesn't handle the x trans sensor files as well as something like Capture One. Now, they give you a copy of Capture One free, you know, like the basic version, uh, but I've been using Adobe Lightroom since version one. I'm not going to switch after using it all that time. And um, I've got my presets working uh, just the way I want them, you know, for the Fuji files and I know how in my Nikon files, everything, all the edits in there, you can't transfer all that over to Capture One. So it just makes more sense for me to keep using Adobe Lightroom. And I like the product. I can zip through my files really quick. But Adobe hasn't been really great with the X-Tran files and like in fine details, like if you zoom in on, you know, like a picture of uh, grass in the background a little bit, you'll know, see like it's kind of a watercolor, watercolor effect or some um, squiggly lines, you know, it just does something strange to the detail, the fine detail in, in certain images. And it's not something you see if you're just looking at it normally, like a normal person would look at a picture, but if, if you're pixel peeping and you zoom in and look at it, you know, it might bother you. But um, the, it's gotten better. And the X-T4, the other thing I was gonna say about the X-T4, the image sensor and I had the XT30 for a little while before I got the Z50 and that image sensor in there which is the same one here same one in the XT3 and a few other Fuji cameras I think a 26 megapixel APS-C sensor it's just a really outstanding sensor it's got great high, IS, high ISO and really excellent dynamic range and um, you know I just I really love the files coming off the XT30 but I just didn't really like that really small body and um, you know, when the X-T4 came out with in-body image stabilization, you know, the fully articulating flip screen, which I don't use that much, but it is nice to have it when you really want it. Um, and, you know, the uh, there's a few other things about it that, um, you know, is different from the X-T3, but those are the major things. The um, in-body image stabilization, the flip-out screen that flips all the way around, um, some other things, but... Um, you know, I, I just thought, well, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and get the X-T4 and get it over with because I always kind of have my eye on it, you know. But um, there's really not a whole lot I can say about it right now, you know, other than, you know, it just acts like any other Fuji camera I've had. Um, I've had the X-T1, X-T2 in the past, also an X-T3 and X-Pro1. The um, thing I was going to say about the X-T4, I'm getting off track here, the... The images coming off of this make me as happy as the images that were coming off the old X-Pro1. I don't know what it was about that sensor in the X-Pro1, but, you know, as soon as I got, like, something like the, I had the X100S also. Um, the X-Pro1 switched, you know, got a newer, like the X-T1, uh, the X-T2. The image sensors in those just didn't have that same look and feel, you know, editing. And these are all RAW files I'm talking about. Editing in Lightroom. I don't know what it is, but there's something about the sensor in the X-Pro1 and now in the X-T4, uh, just something I like about it. And, you know, it's just, it's just really easy to get, you know, a look that I like in editing. And again, I always shoot raw and always use Adobe Lightroom to edit my files. Very seldom would I ever shoot JPEG. And um, especially if it's like something important, you know, if I'm on a vacation and only have one chance to get the shot, you know, I'm always gonna shoot raw. and. Um, if it was just something for work, like you know, a picture of a, you know, a data closet or something, you know, some servers and so on, you know, I might just shoot JPEG for that because I don't really, I'm not going to be doing any big editing or anything. I'm just want something for documentation. But, you know, it, it works out for me. I really like the files and I like the look that I get. And the color on this, this is the silver one, but it's not the silver that you knew on like the X100S, the XE3 silver version. This looks a little bit darker, almost like a mix between the old way too bright silver that I didn't like on the older silver versions. That's why I'd always normally get the black one. Um, but this looks like a mix between the older silver and the new, uh, like that graphite. Um, Fuji, I think, had a special ver special edition graphite X-T1. It was kind of a grayish color, but it was, you know, like a graphite, like a pencil lead or something. Um, it's just a really pretty, um, silver grayish kind of color and this is brighter than that but it's it's kind of along that line that's not really too obnoxious for me i think 
I like this better than just the plain black version, but I, I don't really like that really super bright silver they used in the past. I think this is a much more classy look. And since the bottom is really, you know, it's all silver also and, and just wide open for scratches, and I like to keep my canvas as mint condition as possible. You know, if I sell it, then I want to get as much as I can out of it um, and use that money to help buy another camera later on. Um, I've got the JJC version grip for this. It's just a, a metal grip that gives you a little bit more on the, the uh, hand grip here. But primarily, I'm just buying it to protect the bottom so I don't have to get the bottom scratched up at all. And um, since I'm talking about the battery, it, you know, made the grip bigger and, you know, the body a little bit bigger, but I actually really like it like this. This body is actually just about exactly the same size as the Nikon Z7. And Nikon Z7, again, is a full frame camera. This is just APS-C, smaller sensor. Uh, but that, and the Z7 has a really huge lens mount. But the Z7 and the X-T4 are really about the same size. But that's good for me because I like this larger size. I thought the you know, X-T1, X-T2, even X-T3, probably just a little bit too small. I think there's a really good balance here uh, for the size. And once I put that grip on there, you know, just like I said, just a, a dummy hand grip. I'll do a video about that later when I get back from vacation because I'm going on vacation next week. Um, but that's, that makes it really nice size, and I, I really like that. So I'll kind of stop with that. Just wanted to pop in because I haven't made a video in quite a while. You know, this crazy virus stuff going on. Canceled all my vacations that I did have. You know, I was supposed to be in Europe. I probably was either supposed to be in Europe right now or just getting back. Uh, um, you know, Germany, France, and Spain, it was going to be a trip. Um, and then had a, a cruise scheduled for this year, leaving out New York City of all places. And um, that's, of course, been canceled. So kind of had to rearrange things and just find a couple of places to drive to. So next week I'll be going to um, down south and west. I'll be going over to Hot Springs, Arkansas. Uh, but before I get there, I'm going to stop at um, the Shiloh Civil War Battlefield. So it's an American Civil War site. Uh, it's a big Civil War battle there. So it should be interesting to see that. And uh, head on over to Ar Hot Springs, Arkansas. And uh, again, that's just something that would be interesting to see since I've never been over in that area. And, um, and then a few weeks later in July, I'll be going up to the Wisconsin Dells. So it's a up in Wisconsin, state of Wisconsin. So that'd be something different too. Um, not too exciting compared to being able to go to Europe or something like that, but um, you know, something different, something to do. And I should be able to get plenty of pictures with the Z X-T4, the X-T4 with that. And um, I'll be using just the X-T4 and the 16, 16 to 80 kit lens. That's what I have on here about the kit. And uh, that's the other thing I was going to mention. So far, I really like this lens. It's very compact for what it is, 24 to 120 millimeter equivalent with a constant f4 aperture. And, um, you know, compared to the, I've got some pictures on my website, you know, I'll link the gallery to it. But the X-T4 with the 16 to 80 millimeter lens, which is a 24 to 120 equivalent on full frame, sitting right next to the Nikon Z7 that I'm recording with, um, and the 24 to 70 f4 lens on that, it's just about the same size. Um, of course, this is a 24 to 120 equivalent, so um, and it's just about the same size as that 24 to 70, a little bit smaller. So there's an advantage there uh, in size, you know, with the APS-C. But um, so I'll just be taking this on my trip. This extra battery, my uh, Peak Design sh strap. It's the ash color, and this is the the mid mid size version. I can't remember the. Uh, it's not the slide. A slide light, I think, is what this is. Uh, and then there's like a much smaller version, which I don't really like, except for a really small camera like an X-T30. Uh, but this is really, I think looks really classy on this. Um, there's some other quick release um, strap that I saw on DP Review. Uh, it has sort of some somewhat like this, some type of anchor system and a quick release. I might check that out too, because the only thing I don't like about these Peak Design straps is the metal buckles on them. And you know, if you put them in your bag and it starts rubbing around on your camera, some people don't mind, you know, but I like to keep mine as, you know, pristine as possible, you know, resale later on. Although I do plan on this being a long-term purchase. Um, like the Z7, I've had that since October 2018. And, you know, I, I, I have no interest in getting rid of the Z7. I love it. And I see it going, you know, two, three more years at least. Um, it's that good. And um, so I want to keep it as good a condition as possible. And that's the thing I just, that, that I don't like about the strap. It's a really nice looking strap. But I, it's just a few things I would change about if I had to redesign it, like I'd make this buckle somehow 
kind of a softer material as far as not metal but maybe some kind of a something that where it's just not going to scratch and uh, maybe something with this part here where it attaches to the anchors but that's not too bad but but this metal buckle part just bothers me and I always try to protect the camera once I put it in the bag but so yeah just an extra battery 1680 XT, XT4 and a little bag little peak design six liter sling bag I think it is um, that's all I'm really taking you know some cleaning you know cleaning cloth and a uh, little blower I think there's a bug on my leg um, yeah, that's about it really. should be a pretty simple small kit and get plenty of images from this. Hopefully it's still recording this check. Yep, it is. And this is my uh, Columbia fish hat. I don't fish, but I just like the hat. So, But those are little fish, uh, little white things there. Instead of stars, it's fish. All right, well, I'm going to stop this now. It might rain any time. It's getting a little breezy out here and the clouds are coming. So... Hope everybody's been doing well during the the uh, pandemic situation here. And you get sick of seeing all these commercials about we're alone together, we're all in this together. You know, and we're doing this and that for you. We're cleaning this and that. You can still pull through our drive-through and get whatever. You know, I'm just sick of all those kind of commercials and just want everything to get back to normal. You know, but um, so all right. Well, I'll see you after my trip, and I'll have a lot more pictures for my XT4 gallery, and have a lot more to say probably about the XT4 and maybe try to do it inside so I can kind of get close-ups and show you the camera more closely and if I'm talking about anything. because so I do have some things I want to talk about for the menus and um, how things are set up, you know, the way I set them up and why I set it up that way and um, just things that I would like to see change. You know, for example, I would really love, like on the Nikon, um, I'd love it if Fuji would give us a way to automatically default the exposure compensation back to zero so it's no exposure compensation when you turn the camera off if you have the camera set to the C position on the exposure compensation dial I don't really like to use the top dial because you got to reach up and grab it moving around and if you try to move it with your thumb you might overshoot what you want and then have to go back and forth so I just put it on C and then I use the front or rear dial I can't remember which one I have set right now um, to change the um, exposure compensation but if you turn it off and forget you had it changed to like minus one or plus one um, and you just for whatever reason don't look at the screen and realize that you have it um, some exposure compensation going on it might take you a few shots you're like oh crap I gotta change it and turn it back off um, so it'd just be much more convenient if they give us a way to default the exposure compensation back to zero just like the Nikon I think Panasonic's got a setting like that on my GH5 I had um, you know, in the G9 you can do that where you just turn the uh, camera off and then it forgets the exposure compensation you had set before so Anyway, things like that I'll talk about, so I'll stop this now, and thanks for watching.